slowly we enter in the field of liberation theology and after two meetings, uh, the first very general introduction to the topic, uh, where also you express your expectations and myself, I presented entire uh, syllabus of the seminar. And after our uh, discussion based on uh, the text uh, or the, some chapters of the founding book of liberation theology by Gustavo Gutierrez, the Peruvian uh, Catholic theologian uh, entitled exactly Liberation Theology, where you had occasion to express your doubts, uh, your hesitations, if it is possible to reconcile uh, Christianity or Catholicism with Marxism, and if uh, liberation theology is uh, at all uh, a Catholic uh, uh, movement or perhaps has some uh, heretical traces. Uh, today, uh, I uh, invite you to read the three uh, texts uh, issued by uh, the Vatican, or more precisely speaking, two texts issued by the Congregation of Doctrine of Faith, one in uh, 1984 and uh, the second in 1986, and one uh, very different one uh, is the uh, article from liberal or even leftist uh, newspaper, the British newspaper, The Guardian, on the how uh, uh, Vatican and liber warm, uh, warms uh, his, its attitude toward liberation theology or particularly toward uh, Gustavo Gutierrez. But uh, in order to um, introduce a certain uh, methodology in our uh, deepening uh, of uh, all debate uh, surrounding liberation theologians, I would like to uh, uh, introduce some basic notions, which I will put also with um, my uh, email to you with this uh, short film and uh, inviting you to read uh, these texts uh, on the platform, uh, which we can consider as um, hermeneutic uh, uh, keys to better understanding of religious text, or perhaps uh, uh, as a way to understand any text. And perhaps uh, keeping uh, our eyes uh, focused on uh, these basic principles, we will uh, not only avoid uh, misunderstandings uh, connected with uh, readings, uh, different texts, but also we will be better prepared to understand the intention or purposes of different texts, uh, texts um, which we will uh, read during this uh, seminar, and also perhaps we will be um, better prepared to discuss uh, different, uh, sometimes opposed uh, perspectives, and uh, perhaps we will be able also to discover some convergences or complementarities in the, of different uh, perspectives. Uh, this is what I am going to prepare you and what I will send you with, the, with this uh, email also, um, uh, uh, before our class, I heard uh, first time from uh, an Israeli uh, archaeologist and scientist, uh, biblical scholar, um, Israel F. Al. Uh, once I heard his uh, lecture on the importance of archaeology for understanding uh, uh, biblical text, and, and I just asked him uh, some advices how to understand uh, really a biblical text and I also ask him some supplementary questions if these uh, principles are um, applied also in Israel by Orthodox groups. He said, well, I'm actually presenting the secular uh, uh, science and not religious uh, perspective. 
and I can give you a guarantee that uh, my students at Hebrew University are following these principles and uh, they are very useful for us. If the religious people are doing this, this is, uh, I cannot uh, judge it. So uh, since uh, we are not a, a religious institution, but we are a secular university, I, so I thought that perhaps also for us, it will be very important not only to know these five or six uh, uh, points, but also to, to follow them uh, in our readings, uh, in, in our discussions, and in our growing process of understanding this uh, peculiar uh, topic as uh, theology or liberation theology, but perhaps more important to understand uh, also the reasons why we have uh, so different understanding of the same subject, as you realize already during our first meeting. So the, they are following questions which we should ask uh, before we enter uh, really in, in, in close reading of, of the texts. The first, what is the content of the statement um, of, the, of the text? What is the content? So what is really written there? It seems very simple, but it's very important. First of all, we have to uh, understand the message, the, the content which uh, we are confronted is, uh, with. The second is who wrote it? Who wrote this text? This is very important to know the author or authors or the institutions which is behind or who provides this information. Because it is very important who is saying or writing certain things. We take this uh, information for granted, but we should not. We should really be aware that uh, depends from who uh, provides information, who writes something, he or she could have a certain interest to inform us about certain questions. So it's very important to know who wrote it. The third, when. When, where, and from whom this information was obtained. This is perhaps today, since we are basically reading the contemporary text, it's not so uh, crucial to know uh, the answer for this question, but for all texts written hundreds, thousand years ago, uh, it, it is very important, of course. But also, for example, in our case, uh, you will see the fact that we know when the Congregation of Doctrine and Faith, uh, and particularly the author, Cardinal Ratzinger, issued these precise texts. Uh, in uh, 84, 86, it, it gave us a lot of information because it was the voice in a debate, ongoing debate. And we know that it was only um, in, in, in the context relevant what texts are saying. And the same also, of course, is for Gutierrez books and other books uh, or articles which uh, we will read uh, in our next classes. Uh, what is the origin of the information? From uh, whom uh, we, we got it? What is the origin of information? So it's very important why this text was written. Right? What is the origin? It is a very important question, right? Why? Why this text uh, was written? When we know the purpose, we are reading with different um, perspective or with different understanding than when we read it as, as a daily news or so. No, this is for certain purpose. They are reasons. And if we know these reasons, we better understand the text. The fifth, how 
in what form does the information reach us? How, in what form? You remember from philosophy class uh, that uh, there are different types of philosophizing. So it's more or less the same. It's different when we have a treatise, when we have a confession, when we have a poetry, when we have a letter. So it's also here when we have an instruction, for example, or when we have an academic book. So all these are very important information because it's giving us um, uh, precise information about uh, the text and how to understand it and how the author was expecting a reader to understand it. And why was the information created? Why was the information created? This is the last question, right? Why this information was created? So again, when we know the purpose of the text, we are already prepared to um, discuss not only the text as such, but also the purposes for which they were written. And now I will enter into uh, details exactly in the text which uh, I encourage you to read. Also, perhaps you will have some uh, difficulties in the reading is because it's, it's, it's a technical text, it's a dry text, but uh, you know, in order to understand why we have a tension between uh, scholars, theologians, uh, or, uh, ordinary people, and uh, representatives of the institution, as some of you underlined all, all, already in our, in our discussion, that perhaps. Uh, the problem of power, of influence, of controlling information, all this are, are very relevant. So now, uh, the first text, uh, not so long, 18 pages, I hope you will uh, read it without uh, difficulties. So it's instruction on certain aspects of theology of revelation of liberation, instruction on certain aspect of theology of revelation. So this is the instruction. It means that the author, and we know because at the end you will see that the author is sign, is the cardinal, very important, perhaps most important in the time, the theologian, the Catholic theologian, who is giving us a very precise instruction how to read texts of liberation theologians. So it's the instruction. It means that he is not searching for truth, he is not open for dialogue, but he is giving and precise instruction. You have to read in this way. If you are reading differently, it means is wrong, is not orthodox, is not correct. And if you see uh, quotations or footnotes, there are 35 of them, the most of them are focused only on tradition uh, of the Catholic Church. So what you uh, have proposed here is the uh, or a Catholic orthodoxy, which you as a Catholic should follow. But two years later, we have another text. On this, almost on the same topic. So the same author, you know when, but the question is why it was written uh, so quickly, so one after another. And if you read it carefully, so you have similar text, instruction on Christian freedom at liberation, but the title is different. Also footnotes are different. Also, uh, is the longer text, is almost 40 pages and all, more than 100 footnotes, 146 exactly. And you have not only church tradition, but you have the Bible. So uh, the author, Cardinal Ratzinger, included his oh, Catholic understanding of the Bible, how we should understand it. And for more than 20 years, we have a debate, discussion, etc., etc. And in 2015, who was invited to the Vatican to give a lecture? 
Gustavo Gutierrez. Who invited him? Pope Francis. Why it happened, we will discuss in class, and I hope that we will have a, a fruitful and vivid and instructive discussion.